And we are rolling now. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Rausch, and uh, I'm a consultant helping the district develop a strategic plan. Um, tonight, we have this community forum. Um, we, starting with a little brief presentation, the bulk of the meeting will be set aside for, for comments. We have very few people, so we can, it'll be very casual to be able to just speak up. Um, I have a feeling, I don't know all of you, I, I'm not here a lot, but I recognize a few of you. I have a feeling most of you know an awful lot about the harbor and the marina. But we're going to run through a little bit of background, um, in case you don't, and to set up the discussion. Um, let's see if this clicker clicks. Um, the purpose is very straightforward. We're here to collect public input on the strategic plan. And the board of directors will package up the input we get uh, along with input from another meeting we're going to have at, um, at Pillar Point next week and bring it to the board of directors. They'll take that into account as they wrap up the plan, which is underway. Um, if you have questions tonight or comments, there's two things we'd like to get from you, ideally. There's a little form back there, a survey. Uh, We'd like you to fill that out if you would. Um, leave that with us tonight. It's got some specific questions we'd be interested in hearing about. And um, of course, you're welcome to make any comment, raise any question, whatever you want to do once we get to the portion of the meeting that's set aside for that. Or you can call or email later, uh, whatever you'd like to do. Um, we, we have these five little parts of the meeting, but it's basically very straightforward. There's a front end that's about giving some background information, a little tour of the harbor and the marina, setting up some discussion. We're going to spend a little time um, reviewing the survey form, not to debate it or discuss it at the moment, but just to make sure that the questions are clear, that you, you have the background you need to respond. And then we'll have a period for this open comment question. We'll have a little time for talking about the next steps in the planning process if you want to participate more or come to some of the board meetings where they're going to be discussing these things. Um, the district, just a little bit of brief history, the district was established in 1933 by the by the County Board of Supervisors, and they set the county as the boundaries of the district. Uh, so the whole county is covered by the district. It's got, as everyone knows, water on both sides. And it's got an ocean boundary and it's got a bay boundary. Um, I believe that the first purpose was maybe to build a harbor at Redwood City. And I don't know exactly what happened, but one little history I read said that the Depression intervened. And that was in the 1930s. Um, the first big project was to develop Pillar Point Harbor. That was completed in 1961, and I believe it was coastsiders organizing to help protect the fishing fleet. They wanted a refuge for the fishing fleet, a breakwater, and so the, the district, uh, working with the Army Corps of Engineers, basically built the harbor and the facilities. I don't know myself which ones, but I think the basic structure of it was built around that time. Um, then the next big thing was 1977, the district began running the Oyster Point Marina um, and Park. It's owned by the city of South San Francisco, so the district's um, working to manage it and to run it. Uh, they used loans and grants from the state to construct basically the facilities, the docks, the public facilities, the fishing pier, the boat launch ramp, etc. So that's sort of a super brief history of the district. I think probably everyone in this room knows, I guess, that it's a special district. Um, it's type of local government. I believe there's like 2,500 special districts in California. They're established to provide a special service or a, a needed service in an area, usually just one or a couple of services, water, parks, recreation, air pollution, airport, harbors, there's a whole mess of them. I think there's like 80 categories of them. And the mission of this one, of course, is to, is to uh, assure that the public is provided with clean, safe, well-managed, financially sound, and environmentally pleasant marinas. It's governed by an elected board of directors, and uh, a couple of them were elected just yesterday in the, uh, in the uh, yesterday's voting. Um, and it's managed by professional staff that's hired by that board of commission. Um, I'd like to just run through a quick photo tour of, of the, uh, 
uh, of the facilities. I think all of you know these places, so I'm going to move really, really quickly. Uh, this is just a picture of Pillar Point, I believe. Most of you, I'm guessing, know these places better than me. There's a number of facilities, um, boat launch, boat hoist, berths, rest, restroom, boat trailers, uh, you know, places to walk and ride your bike, uh, beautiful places to be, to go kayaking, uh, a variety of businesses, restaurants, and rental places for uh, stand-up surfboards and different things. Uh, there's a view of the kind of restaurant row, uh, people fishing, uh, kayak rental place. There's Coastside Fishing Club, a salmon project based out of there. I don't really know anything about it, but um, just a variety of things going on around the harbor and dealing with the environment. The, uh, uh, an RV park um, on the edge of it. Of course, a fishing fleet. I think that was the original purpose. There's still a fishing fleet. I think it's one of the few in the state. Um, someone could tell me, I'm sure, but uh, that's a notable part of what's happening here. And just a quick um, um, sunset. Oyster Point Marina over here, a little smaller. There's the ferry. It's got ferry service coming out of it. Um, again, place to fish, place to walk. The, the, District provides search and rescue services. Um, there's a team of people working. I think there's 38 employees um, providing, you know, maintaining things, taking care of the, all the business that needs to be done, maintaining the place, um, responding to oil spills, etc. So that was a very quick fly through. Um, in case any of you are new to the district or new to these facilities. Uh, the district facilities, some were built quite a while ago. They're in varying stages of repair. Um, some require complete replacement. They've reached the end of their useful life. Others are uh, still still working well. The district has a detailed plan to maintain it, to replace and upgrade facilities. Um, and it's got healthy reserves, finances to pay for that. It's got a five-year plan, and it's moving along in that plan. I believe the current estimates are that for finance or that the district will receive about $7 million in property tax revenue from around <coughs> the county next year, around $4.8 million in permits, fees, and other kinds of revenue that's non-tax revenue. Uh, the district has strong reserves. It's got no debt. It reports its finances clearly and well. Um, one financial issue is some legacy contracts with harbor-related businesses that um, it would be good if they provided more revenue. They're not necessarily paying their way in terms of the maintenance needed at this point. So that's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, so that's just a quick run through. There's a little more background when we talk about the survey form, which has some questions that range from very simple, like this one. Do you feel you know enough about the district? Give some examples, what it does, its plans and directions, its services. I, we'd be interested in hearing what you think about that question. Is it generally yes or generally no and why? You know, do you know what you need to know about the district? Um, are there harbor-related topics you'd like to hear more about? Are there things they're not communicating enough about aspects of their service or aspects of their planning or aspects of, of anything they're doing that you'd like to hear more about? Um, where do you primarily get your information? Where do you hear? We, we, We give one place on the survey form, I think, for it, but if you have a couple, please note down a couple. And then we'd be interested in knowing what are the top one or two ways that you'd like to get your information about the district. We give a few suggestions, um, but the, the last number F is other. If there's some other way you'd like to hear from us, I think it'd be useful for the district to hear so it could plan how it wants to communicate, how it can communicate best with folks. Um, in terms of finance, uh, sort of a this is sort of a background to a question. The draft strategic plan financial priorities. There's already a, a draft, some some issues that have been discussed by the board in draft form, and one of them is that that they want to um, extend the planning cycle for finance. So, um, if they're planning now for a five-year horizon or a ten-year horizon, they want to extend that to the longest possible distance to ensure stability and, and long-range planning. Um, 
They also want to deal with the lease contracts to make sure that they're providing adequate revenue. Those were sort of the two key things in the financial area so far. And we'd be interested in knowing if you have comments or questions or additional input about financial priorities that you'd like to see or that you have questions about. Um, uh, we have a number of questions about the role of the district in the community and in the county. Um, as sort of prelude to that, we note that the district owns Pillar Point Harbor and it operates Oyster Point, Oyster Point Marina on behalf, behalf of South San Francisco. That agreement with South San Francisco expires in um, 2026, and there's been ongoing discussions about renewing that contract. Um, there is, in fact, a draft agreement that will be reviewed this month. Um, one question associated that with that is, do you have questions or comments about that draft agreement or about that plan? Um, if you know about it and if you don't know about it, what are your questions? Uh, should the district expand its role by potentially owning or operating other public harbors in the county or, or stick to the ones it's already at? If so, why, why not? Um, another related question, should the district spend tax revenue on things like parks and public safety, public services at properties it does not own at Oyster, at Oyster Point, uh, such as at Oyster Point? If yes, why? If no, why not? So that's related to public facilities, public services. And then should the district spend tax revenue on enterprise services, like expanding the docks or improving the docks at properties the district doesn't own? Um, and then again, if yes, why? If no, why not? We'd be interested in hearing that. Um, another current issue for the district is its, is its building. It's currently operating out of a, a rented space in El Granada. That's around $100,000 a year. There's a number of reasons why it may or may not want to own its own facility. And we'd be interested in people's opinion on that, if they know about it or any questions they have about it. Um, if you do think the district should look at owning its own facility, uh, where do you think that would be appropriate? Why do you have an opinion on that? And then getting more broad, more general. Um, if you think about the community and the harbor and the marina as far as you can in the future, what are the most important harbor-related challenges that you think the district should prepare for? Whether that's things like climate change, changing demographics, um, any other issues or problems or challenges or opportunities that you think the district ought to take into account as it's planning for the future. And then, Focusing a little more narrowly, this is essentially the last question. Five, ten, or more years in the future, if you were granted power with the district, what are the few most important things that you would change or keep the same? So are there things that you think the district is doing well that you'd like to keep the same in the future, or things you'd like to see changed or improved? Uh, we'd like to hear about the couple of most important ones that are in mind. Um, so that gives you sort of a freedom to think about any aspect of the harbor and marina that, that you're interested in. Um, so that little brief, basically 15 minute introduction gets us really to what we're here for. And since we have so few people, um, one, I'd like to encourage you, if you don't have that little survey form, I think I see you do, please grab one. There's a little little board there, you, sort of a lap board, you could, and some pens, you could fill it out. I ask you to leave it with us before you leave. You just bring it up to the table here. I'll make sure it gets, um, gets to, the, to the board, whatever your answers are. And again, since there's so few people, I'd like to just ask um, if any of you have any comments or questions, anything you'd like to share that you want to make sure that the board hears as they talk about their strategic planning. Uh, any issues, any ideas, any questions, any thoughts, um, we'll get them to the, um, to the board of commissioners. Before I start, uh, you said um, something that confused me. Are we going to be presenting an MOU for discussion at the next meeting? Or is there going to be an MOU presented for approval? I don't know. Can I ask Steve, the, the manager? Or we presented in such a way that it could be either. So it could be approved. Okay. Um, I guess uh, along those lines, then, it looks to be like the most momentous decision the district is going to make in the next 50 years is going to happen possibly at the next meeting. Uh, they're going to possibly extend 
the uh, MOU for another 30 to 50 years. And it does seem like there might be a big rush to make that happen when there's some real problems in the first place with the whole concept of running that district out there in the future. The biggest issue is, is that the district is unable to really make a move on repairing the, uh, the deficiencies in the docks, the fuel system, in the sewer pipes, the electrical sub -sub stuff, all the junk that's buried underneath the dump. They can't really do anything until a community facility district is formed between, like this, the Harbor District and a couple city and a couple of taxpayers out there. And one of the taxpayers sort of object objected, one of the property owners, to Wishawa. I believe how you pronounce it. And they've got it all tied up in the courts. In fact, the next uh, court date, I believe, is November 16th, when the city is trying to try to get it tossed out, but that doesn't really seem uh, something you can count on. It seems to me that the city is, or, or punt and give it to the city, at which time the city didn't have the option to take it all on or just close it all down. So we're, we're, you know, I guess what the, needs to be communicated is I'm not sure that the Harbor Commissioners are getting any updates about the actual CFD formation or the state of the case because the way that the district has now been structured, they don't talk about what happens at Oyster Point unless uh, the Oyster Point Committee, which I believe is Mr. Bernardo and Mr. Matouche, decides that it's something that they want to talk about with the rest of the board. So I'm not sure they even get all this. Can I pause you just Go for a moment? Yeah. So um, it sounds like that's going to be a topic at an upcoming board meeting. Yeah, but what you said, you see, there's a possibility that we're going to pass, though, the, like the current actually have a possibility of passing and committing the district to another 30, 50 years. I'm not, I haven't had time to, of course, do the whole MOU yet. At that meeting, when two days later, there might be a court case that might make it all extend for another year. And what's going on out there is you have a situation that was revealed in a recent PRA request where the manager is so hot to get things going out there because the fuel dock is such a mess that they're asking the city if it's okay if we just kind of front everybody the 75000 and get going on this. And the city has come back and said, we're not going to spend a penny out there until this court case is resolved. Excuse me. We have plenty of time to hear more about it. If you, if you don't mind, I'd like to see if someone else has another topic, and we'll come back. Okay. There's probably going to be plenty of time yeah, to, so, yeah. to continue. Is there anyone else? I, I see a few people. I'll just go this way, if that's okay. We'll just move this way. We, I, do, you have, do you have a comment? Um, I just think that uh, one of the things I've uh, mentioned over my years of coming to these meetings is that the district really needs to come up with some sort of climate action plan, mm -hmm. some sort of comprehensive, um, and that could be under the strategic planning um, uh, format or structure or be part of that, but uh, this is something that really needs to happen right away. <coughs> Uh, one of the commissioners tried to give a presentation on the flooding conditions uh, at one point and how that affects uh, uh, user access, public access, public safety. Um, that presentation was shut down a few minutes before it was give, set to be given. Um, and I haven't been to uh, these meetings, Harbor District meetings, in the last few months, but I don't know if anything has uh, progressed on that matter when, when it comes to climate action, when it comes to looking at all the development proposals that are up for approval or uh, business permits, whatever, licenses that come for approval before this board, whether there's any sort of element in policy of making sure that climate, sea level rise, flooding, public safety issues related to climate change are actually um, part of this decision making. Um, and going back to Oyster Point, we're talking about uh, poorly capped landfill, the land is subsiding. You drive out there, as I did a couple weeks ago, to collect soil samples. Um, it's a really bumpy road, the pavement's all uneven. Um, and in the soil I collected, I mentioned this at a meeting last year, but there's elevated levels of certain heavy metals there, which, you know, there, there are some uh, EPA regulated limits on heavy metals in drinking water, not so much for soils, but there are children playing in those soils, young children who can keep the soils. All these things I don't think are things that um, this board or staff is necessarily thinking about. So 
Um, so yeah, to boil it down, I just think something around climate action and environmental concerns needs to be front and center. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, you. You had a comment, didn't you? <clears throat> well, my wife told me about this meeting, and I, I was under the impression it was going to be about Oyster Point and all the development that's going on down there. And um, see, I represent a group of uh, people that go to the beach every day, mm -hmm. swimmers. And up until this year, there was regular service at the beach. And I'd like to know who's responsible for maintaining the beach. They used to come down with regular garbage pickup. There was people would break the beach, pull weeds, make it really nice. And also, uh, there's a shower for the swimmers and children and whatnot. But the water's been turned off. Nobody has taken any responsibility for anything. Uh, there was a woman that came down regularly every two weeks and took samples of the water and took it to a laboratory. And, and if it was polluted or contaminated with whatever they looked for, they would put out a sign saying water activities are uh, not encouraged, you know. And the whole place is going to hell. <laughs> it's like, and I just want to know who's responsible so I can maybe make a phone call. I'm not sure, but let me ask. Steve, he's the general manager of the Harbor District. Do you know what he's referring to? And yes, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the beach, and um, my belief is that that responsibility is transferred to uh, South, the city of South San Francisco. Oh, the city's so, running it now? Yeah, but let me give you my card. Okay. Uh, because I see the... Uh, shoot, shoot me an email, and uh, oh, okay. I'll get you contact information and uh, an update. Okay, thank you, brother. All right. Oh yeah, and also they um, they need to put another uh, what do they call them portable toilets. <clears throat> they had one there before, but they took it away, and uh, it's not it, that's not good because there's a lot of people go down there and they relieve themselves in the bushes and everything. It's it's gotten really disgusting. Okay, we've been going. I've been going there for 16 years, or like on a daily basis, and I just hate to see what's happened to the place. It's like it's been let go, you know. Nobody shows up and does anything. And, and when you've got you know, children and families coming down on the weekends, right. I think it should be maintained. Thank you. That's okay, all. good. All right, thank you. Um, I see someone over here. I don't know if you had a comment. I couldn't see Me? you. Yeah. I'm, I'm just here to You're just here to listen? Answer, okay, if you do. I, mean, I, I don't know your name. I'm sorry. John. Jeff? John. John. Do you I have a I thought we didn't quite sure, close, close on this gentleman's comment. Um, I just wanted to mention to you that um, there are two harbor commissioners in the room, myself and Commissioner Lorenas. Oh, okay. And um, I just looked in my wallet to see if I had a card and I'm out of cards right now, but I'd be happy to give you my contact information. I had one already. For me? This gentleman over here gave me one. But you He's might from the cemetery. Yeah, he's actually leaving in a few weeks, so you might want to get my okay. car contact. Right. Yeah. Do you have a call? I'll, I'll come give it to you. Yeah, and on the water quality sampling, that's Amateur County Environmental Health Department that does that. Amateur County Environmental Health Department. Yeah, and they're mandated to test water and stuff. But they haven't been there. Yeah, so you can call them. Just call the Amateur County Environmental Health Department. Also look on their website. They they uh, they have information on water quality. Oh, right. But I would call them directly and just ask about why they're not sampling. Same <coughs> point, environmental health department. Yes. Thank you. I can give you their phone number sure if you want. I'm oh, sorry. I can give you their phone number. Oh, okay. That'd be great. Full service here. This is good. <laughs> Thank you. We need to please. Thank you. So John. Whatever you're saying here will not get to the board before the 16th, I don't think. But no, our meeting is on the 14th. Uh -huh. The, the uh, lawsuit issue you mentioned that I was worrying about, that's, the 16th. that's on the 16th. Okay, so I don't know how much you want to say here because the rest of the Harbor Commissioners won't hear it. There's two commissioners here that they've that heard it for the first time. Okay, so but, you want to... But the, I guess the other the other angle to take it that is is that there are a lot of people who live all the point. Mm -hmm. 
and this actually where the, that's kind of like for a lot of them, that's the last place before they're going to end up either leaving the Bay Area or on the street. And I don't think they understand just how tenuous their existence is out there. That the agreements are already in place and it's already formalized that if the CFD does not get formed, it's a community facility district, that the, that the harbor could be just a couple of boats away from being shut down. The other side of it is, is the study that, you know, that the harbor, this district is a, an enterprise district, it's supposed to make money on managing other people's resources. And so uh, you can see that, uh, that uh, I lost my train of thought, but the, the people aren't really aware of you know, what's going on up here. I know this, so they, they've got a study going to see if we can make this enterprise profitable. And that's the Dornbush study. And the Dornbush study shows that if everything goes right for the next 20 or 30 years, that we might break even on our investments up there or make a little bit of profit. And no businessman would take that kind of deal of such a limited prospect of a return on investment over the possibility that things don't go right for the next 20 or 30 years, if there aren't any recessions or if there aren't any big downturns in the economy or that the course the point doesn't really have a serious problem or that the developer doesn't just give up like the last four or five developers have and just swap all the projects. So, there's no one here to tell this to, obviously, except uh, two commissioners. I don't know if there's any reporters here. I'm sure the people of South San Francisco that are here are well aware of what um, they're hoping for. But, and I guess I might as well be done here at this point, but there does seem to be a real push to get this wrapped up, this MOU, multiple years before the existing one expires when there's this side issue of no one's really clear if there's going to be any funding to repair the mess that that, dish, that harbor is right now or that anybody wants to take it on if they can't coerce Kawishua to pay for it or help pay for it. The other thing to talk about, I guess my last before I go, is there are a whole bunch of other rumors swirling around. We know a lot of people that live out there at the harbor Apparently there's a big issue with the, the construction has done damage to the Oyster Point Yacht Club and uh, people are talking lawsuits and stuff like that and, and uh, I don't think that a lot of this is being made clear to people. We get a lot of rosy eye in the sky scenarios but nothing that you're telling people really lays out the challenges that Oyster Point faces. What, what damage to the Yacht Club are you talking about? I, claimed about there was like foundation damage or just some construction thing. Maybe it's tilting or leaning over like the Millennium Tower. I don't know if these guys were uninformed or not, you know, they weren't experts, but they were they were complaining about it. They're upset about it and there's talk of lawsuits. And, okay. And there's other things going on out there, like the the cap is or the thing is sinking, that there is a, a lot of toxic waste buried there. That there's a lot of infrastructure that is buried in that waste. Things like sewer pipes, the electrical um, systems. A lot of the stuff's already been found to be well out of its life range. No one's talking about who's going to pay for that or how that's going to be dealt with. And yet we're talking about making a 50-year commitment. And the last thing to leave you with is Mike Futrell, the, the city manager of, of South San Francisco, is on record as stating that the whole point of the lease or the deal they have with the Harvard District was that it took a horrible liability off the shoulders of the city of South San Francisco and basically put it on the people of San Mateo County. And so we're presenting this rosy scenario like, oh, we got all these money to spend and we just need to do this or that, not telling people the real truth about the challenges that are faced at Oyster Point. Is doing everybody who's trying to inform a disservice. Right. Good. Okay. Let me just see if there's any. Did you have more? Or was that? Uh, did you make your point? Uh, well, uh, to that point, I, my talk is a little unrelated. I think the debate is not so much over whether these uh, these 
properties or the management of these properties is a profit maker or a, or a loss leader or whatever, um, we fund public services that are going to lose money. Uh, the question is whether or not the county paying into Oyster Point Marina has the same value for the entire county that the county paying into Brown and Pillar Point Harbor does. Um, I personally don't think it does. Um, from my work uh, with folks who used to live at Pete's Harbor, uh, when they were being evicted, they always pointed to Oyster Point Marina as being an undesirable place uh, to bring their boats, uh, not just to live, but to recreate, because of just the geography and the way the winds work there. It's not the most attractive place for boaters. Um, so there, there are a lot of uh, issues with Oyster Point that you know need to be discussed, but I think the whole, because if we talk, if we're talking about, well, this doesn't make money, Pillow Point doesn't, we're not, Pillow Point doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily gonna make money for the taxpayers either. Um, just to the topic that I do want to talk about, um, I want to bring up the fact that we're moving to a district election format in the Harbor District. Right. And one of the things that um, the Harbor District has not done yet, I do think um, a, major a minority of the board up until this point um, were interested in doing this, but the majority was not. Um, one of the issues I see is that there isn't much connection between the Harbor District and a lot of underserved communities in the county that are paying into the Harbor District. Uh, the way um, uh, the way folks who uh, live near and have the resources to enjoy Pillar Point and Oyster Point do. Um, and there needs to be some uh, program implemented to make that connection. Uh, the county parks department is has created a service where they're, uh, I'm not sure how often it is, but they're doing free shuttle rides from out from East Palo Alto to different county parks for free, so that folks who normally don't get out into nature, who don't have that in their neighborhoods, um, have that sort of access. Uh, I've come before this board multiple times uh, making that ask, and I think a couple commissioners were interested, maybe three after last night. Um, but uh, that's, so that's why I'm bringing it up, because I feel like um, there might be more openness to this idea now. Um, I want to echo kind of what John said. Um, I think the strategic planning process needs to be slowed down enough for that input to uh, be part part of this process before anything is voted on. Um, and yeah. So that what can be voted on? So 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 that so that these considerations, which um, were not given much attention, uh, at least for, just in my opinion, as an observer who's been coming to these meetings for the last six years. Uh, these issues haven't been given much attention, and I think uh, maybe after what happened last night, they will be. So I would like to see um, the strategic planning process slow down so uh, the incoming board, uh, which is gonna include you know, four incumbents and one new person, uh, can be the ones who are making the decisions on this planning process. Okay. Did you have any more, sir? <clears throat> no, no, Paul, um, does anybody know, where would I find out about exactly what's going to be built around there? With all that construction. Everybody seems to be concerned about whether or not there's going to be any residential. I think that one got shut down. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, but there's, <laughs> but there's, there's, no, there's no real way to know what's going to be built out there. They keep changing developers, economically, they throw, not, they just throw plans out there all the time. You mean all that work that's going on out there now? Nobody knows what it's about. Well, the work that we know. Well, they have all that work moving the equipment and everything. Well, the prepping stuff to get ready, but no one knows exactly what you're going to end up with. You might well, have some stuff that's committed to now, but there's no real thing. That's a great answer. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> well, actually, but, you know, it'd be nice if we could get the general manager to chime in on that question, because that's really more just wheelhouse. Yeah, the project is currently owned by Kilroy Realty, and uh, they're the ones responsible for the construction that's going on now, and they're the ones going to be responsible for implementing the <coughs> first phase, for well, all of the development out there. The first phase of it is already what's called in type. It has the 
planning approvals in place. Okay. That's for uh, 500,000 uh, 500, square feet of office space. Office space. And then the, the subsequent phases that do not have the current planning approval uh, is more office space. As uh, I think John said just now, uh, the residential component that have been floated at one point Give me that email. I will reply also with a link to a website where you can get more information about Thank the you. development. And that development does have some kind of program. They have some meetings and some information you can sign up and get. The city will probably have some information on it too because they have um, So we're very few people. I don't know if you have any more, John. Or well, I get thousands, but that was the CFP. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell me what the CFP stands for again? I didn't catch it. Community Facilities District. That's right. Okay. It's basically, they're <clears throat> people who group of people are either agree to or who are interested in the payment for the development because they all will derive some sort of benefit. Right. Okay. Around that development. Right. Yeah. So they picked the, they picked all the narrowest people they could get it down because no one wants to pass it, obviously. Right. And Kawishiwa is it was the one who was having the being served for lunch, basically. They don't see ours, it helps, it helps them at all. It's just not here, but they're, they're the ones that are challenging. Okay, good. And then, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. That's fine, my name is James. Um, I do uh, have just uh, one quick thing to ask. Um, is it possible to have that draft copy of that MOU uh, included with, because when I went onto the website, looked at community forums and all these videos, back of materials, but I think having that draft MOU is important to include that because that gives context for um, a lot of things around Orchard Point and what the district is thinking of doing or, or, or what kind of agreement the district is thinking of maybe implementing there. I think that's, that all needs to be part of, um, part of that web page. Um, it would be nice if so you'd like to have it on the web page for strategic for, for Yeah, because I think, I mean, if we're talking strategic, strategic plans and looking through that draft agreement, it says, you know, we could approve up to a 35-year agreement. I think that has to be on there. Okay. I don't know the status of that, we, Steve. Can you make that happen? It's already on the website yeah. under a link to the October 17th board meeting. Yeah. Okay. That's so we can absolutely right. move it over onto the strategic plan page. Sherry, can you take a note of that just so, because mm -hmm. this stuff will be a little delayed in happening, that can happen quicker. But for the public's clarity, I just want to mention that we did not actually discuss the draft MOU or get to that agenda item in at our last meeting in October. So there's been zero board discussion to date about the draft MOU or anything related. There's been no explanation from our staff about why that was even, you know, on the agenda. So there's been no discussion so far. Okay. And has this raised any more questions for you? I think we're starting to run it down. And I know we have this person over here. Are you still just in listening mode? Yes. Okay. <laughs> she works for the city of South Carolina. Okay, so, okay, good. Um, <laughs> Is that rapid for the people that are here? Well, Do you have something to comment on? It just kind of, you know, I just want to say that we're spending a lot of money as a district to put on the strategic planning um, mm -hmm. workshop process. And tonight we only had three members of the public attend the meeting. Um, so it's also a meeting held at a midterm elections. Um, so it's no wonder that people don't want to come out tonight. Um, it just feels a lot like we're not doing a very strategic job on our strategic planning workshop scheduling. And I think we could probably do better on that. Um, this was kind of ill-conceived. I think the turnout is evidence of that. So I'm just concerned that as a board, we get back much information from the public as possible and clearly there's been
been a failure here this evening, not to insult any of these three wonderful public members who are spending their, you know, what should be their free time here and try to help us, but, you know, this is not, this is not a very good turnout uh, to have three people show up. How about we put them up here? Yeah, sure. Would there be any thought to having this meeting in Oyster Point? Uh, in the actual place? Yeah. Um, I, I did not, I don't know about how the places were considered. Steve, can you comment on the location? Just the, this is where we have our regular uh, commission meetings. This is, I think, I work on the assumption that this is the place most connected with public engagement with the commission and the district. Well, just a counterpoint to that, mm -hmm. we do have every other meeting, so six meetings a year approximately are held in this facility right here. Um, however, when you compare the public turnout at the meetings held in this location to the public turnout at the meetings held at the location at our office building um, in El Granada, these meetings in this facility are always generally there's very poor attendance by the public. So I think it's either inconvenient or it's just too far from the facility. There's no real relationship between this space and Oyster Point Marina. So I think, you know, people don't think to come here for Harbor District meetings. It's hard to get here at 6 30 in the evening. Yeah. Probably about ninety percent of the county is a forty five minute commute away from here at that time of day. It's like if you get out of work on time and you don't have to go home and take care of anything and you have no life like James and me. <laughs> so, hey. Yeah. Yes. Um, can I ask, kind of dovetailing off of that, um, can I ask that um, for whatever people work on that are just being done, that a meeting be held uh, kind of quote unquote off site, like not necessarily co site and here, but somewhere else in the county? Because everyone else in the county, again, uh, I'm speaking as a Redwood City resident, as someone who um, knows people at the marinas in Redwood City, you could get a lot of input from other people who either visit, live at, recreate at other marinas in the day. Um, if notices were put up at, at Coyote Point or at Fair Island um, or at the Marine Science Institute in Redwood Shores, not Redwood Shores, but on the Bay Shore Road of City. But these are all places that are interested in, or should be interested and would be interested in what the Harbor District is doing. And I remember, I was able to attend, but I remember that for the workshops held around district elections and mm -hmm. plannings for those boundaries, like one meeting was actually held in Redwood City at the library there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, as a Redwood City resident at South County Restaurant, really appreciated that. And again, um, looking forward ahead to when we have district elections, I think that would be a really good first step to prepare people to get more out there in other parts of the county so that um, they're more familiar with the work you all are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
might help us if you guys paid some effort to get this thing, this broadcast on the internet. My brother and I used to do it for five hundred dollars with the equipment. You mean know, live streaming? Live streaming on the internet, yeah. I kind of like, like I look at public meetings, like sporting events. I don't watch videotape sporting events. I don't watch videotape public meetings. I want to see it live. My dad thinks that's stupid, but. Um, but yeah, but it's a really minimal investment. I'm pretty sure Steve could handle the technicalities of it, you know, to be handy and uh, make this not out of the box, the out of the box technology for people to do it. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Workshop scheduled for November 28th. Um, a different format focused on the board, but the public can listen and participate to some degree. And another board workshop at the South San Francisco Main Library on Tuesday, December 4th. Um, so those are the next steps in the process if you're interested in coming again, listening, hearing what the board has to say on this topic. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you, know, you mentioned earlier that we just had an election on that, but the decision, like I can tell you generically, this is an issue that occurs with districts or public agencies and they switch the plans over time. Sometimes they complete them when they're when they're coming up upon an election time and a new board being set. Sometimes they finish them up with, with the new people sitting in. Sometimes they put them on hold and wait till the new people are sat. Is this supposed to be the conclusion? Um, I believe so, all, yeah. This is what we have scheduled at this point. I did work with uh, President Virginia on scheduling these. Certainly the point you make, uh, Commissioner Brennan, could be brought up at that first board workshop, and uh, additional workshops could be scheduled, or the second one could be pushed out. Um, yeah, I mean, that's absolutely within the board's purview. And also, uh, uh, the new Commissioner-elect Ryrie is, of course, welcome to attend this. To that issue, I would just add that this is right like in between that Thanksgiving Christmas time it's and other holiday time. Um, it would be really helpful if um, the board workshop, I, I know that board members can Skype in now, but the members of the public can't do that. Um, it would be really helpful if um, these were pushed out.